Below the waters of Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula lies the site of a long-ago mass murder. In a geologic instant, most of the world's animal and plant species went extinct. Drilling through hundreds of meters of rock, investigators have finally reached the footprint left by the accused. That footprint marks Earth's most notorious space rock impact known as Chicxulub. It's the dinosaur killer. Scientists are assembling the most detailed timeline yet of the dino apocalypse. They are giving fresh scrutiny to the telltale fingerprints left by the fateful event so long ago. At the impact site, an asteroid or maybe a comet crashed onto Earth's surface. Mountains formed in mere minutes. In North America, a towering tsunami buried plants and animals alike under thick piles of rubble. Lofted debris darkened skies around the world. The planet chilled and stayed that way for years. But the asteroid may not have acted alone. Life may already have been in trouble. Growing evidence points to a supervolcanic accomplice. Eruptions in what is now India spewed out molten rock and caustic gases. These may have acidified the oceans. All of this could have destabilized ecosystems long before and after the asteroid hit. The jolt of that impact may even have boosted the eruptions, some researchers now argue, as more clues have emerged. Some seem to conflict, and the identity of the dinosaur's true killer remains shrouded in mystery. The Smoking Gun What is clear is that a massive die-off took place around 66 million years ago. It is visible in the layers of rock that mark the boundary between the Cretaceous and the Paleogene periods. The fossils that were once abundant no longer appear in rocks after that time. Studies of fossils found or not found across the boundary between these two periods show that three out of every four plant and animal species went extinct at about the same time. This included everything from the ferocious Tyrannosaurus rex to microscopic plankton. Everything living on Earth today traces its ancestry to the few lucky survivors. Over the years, scientists have blamed many suspects for the catastrophic die-out. Some have suggested global plagues struck, or maybe a supernova fried the planet. In 1980, a team of researchers including Father Son Duo, Lewis and Walter Alvarez reported discovering lots of iridium in places worldwide. Iridium is rare in Earth's crust, but abundant in asteroids and other space rocks. The finding marked the first hard evidence for a killer asteroid impact, but without a crater, the hypothesis couldn't be confirmed. Piles of impact debris led crater hunters to the Caribbean. Eleven years after the Alvarez paper, scientists at last identified the smoking gun, the hidden crater. It circled the coastal Mexican town of Chicxulub Puerto. Based in part of the gaping size of the depression, scientists estimated the size of the impact. They figured it must have released 10 billion times as much energy as the nuclear bomb dropped on Hiroshima, Japan in 1945. That's big. Questions have remained, though, about how the impact might have caused so much death and destruction worldwide. It now appears that the blast itself wasn't the big killer in the impact scenario. It was the darkness that followed. Inescapable Night The ground shook, powerful gusts roiled the atmosphere, debris rained from the sky, Soot and dust spewed by the impact and resulting wildfires filled the sky. That soot and dust then began to spread like a giant sunlight blocking shade over the entire planet. How long did the darkness last? Some scientists had estimated that it was anywhere from a few months to years. But a new computer model is giving researchers a better sense of what happened. It simulated the length and severity of the global cooldown, and it must have been truly dramatic. Clay Tabor, a worker at the National Center for Atmospheric Research in Boulder, studies ancient climates, and he and his colleagues have reconstructed a sort of digital crime scene. It was one of the most detailed computer simulations ever made of the impact's effect on climate. The simulation begins by estimating the climate before the smash-up. The researchers determined what the climate might be from geologic evidence of ancient plants and levels of atmospheric carbon dioxide. Then comes the soot. A high-end estimate of soot totals some 70 billion metric tons. That number is based on the size and global fallout of the impact. 
and it's huge. It's the equivalent weight of about 211,000 Empire State buildings. For two years, no light reached Earth's surface. Global temperatures plummeted 16 degrees Celsius or 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Arctic ice spread southward. Some areas would have been hit particularly hard. The temperature nosedived in the Pacific Ocean around the equator. Meanwhile, coastal Antarctica barely cooled. Inland areas generally fared worse than coastal ones. Those divides could help explain why some species and ecosystems weathered the impact while others died off. Six years after the impact, sunshine returned to levels typical of conditions before the impact. Two years after that, land temperatures warmed to levels higher than had been typical before the impact. Then all of the carbon flung into the air by the impact took effect. It acted like an insulating blanket over the planet, and the globe ultimately warmed several degrees more. Evidence of the chilling darkness is in the rock record. Local sea surface temperatures modified fat molecules in the membranes of ancient microbes. The fossilized remains of those fats provide a temperature record that plummeted 3 degrees Celsius, about 5 degrees Fahrenheit, following the impact. Similar abrupt temperature drops, plus darkened skies, killed plants and other species that nourished the rest of the food web. The cold darkness was the impact's deadliest weapon. Buried Alive Ancient graveyard covers swaths of Montana, Wyoming, and the Dakotas. It's called Hell Creek Formation, and it's hundreds of kilometers of fossil hunter's paradise. Erosion has uncovered dinosaur bones. Some jut out of the ground, ready to be plucked and studied. Thousands of miles away from the Chicxulub crater, scientists have found something surprising signs of tsunami. Evidence of the supersized tsunami generated by the Chicxulub impact had previously been found only around the Gulf of Mexico. It had never been seen this far north or so far inland, but the symptoms of tsunami devastation were clear. The rushing water dumped sediment onto the landscape. The sediment contained iridium and glassy debris that formed from rock vaporized by the impact. It also contained fossils of sea species, such as snail-like ammonites, they had been carried from the seaway, and the evidence didn't stop there. These are the dead bodies. If a crime scene investigation team walks over to a burned-down building, how do they know if the guy died before or during the fire? You look for carbon and soot in the lungs. In this case, fish have gills. The gills were packed with glass from the impact. That means the fish were alive and swimming when the asteroid hit. The fish had been alive up until the moment the tsunami pushed across the landscape. It crushed the fish under debris. Those unfortunate fish are the first known direct victims of the Chicxulub impact. The climate change and deforestation that followed took longer to do their damage. Just under the fish-filled tsunami deposits was another amazing find dinosaur tracks from multiple species. These dinosaurs were running and alive before they were hit by the tsunami. The entire ecosystem in Hell Creek was alive and kicking until the last moment. In no way was it on the decline. The new evidence from the Hell Creek formation confirms that most of the deaths at the time were caused by the Chicxulub impact. While many other scientists are convinced, emergent evidence supports an alternative hypothesis for the dinosaur's demise. Their downfall may have come at least partly from deep within the Earth. Death from Below Long before the Chicxulub impact, a different disaster was underway on the other side of the planet. Back then, India was its own landmass near Madagascar off of the east coast of what is now Africa. The Deccan volcanic eruptions there would ultimately belch out some 1.3 million cubic kilometers or 300,000 cubic miles of molten rock and debris. That's more than enough material to bury Alaska to the height of the world's tallest skyscraper. Gases spewed by similar volcanic outpourings have been linked to other major extinction events. Researchers determined the ages of crystals embedded in the lava flows that show that most of the eruptions began roughly 250,000 years before the Chicxulub impact, and they continued about 500,000 years after it. This means that the eruptions were ranging at the height of the extinctions. This new timeline lends credence to those who doubt that the Chicxulub impact was the chief cause of the extinction event. 
volcanism is vastly more dangerous to life on Earth than an impact. In the same way that iridium marks fallout from the Chicxulub impact, the Deccan volcanism has a calling card of its own. It is the element mercury. Most mercury in the environment originated from volcanoes. Large eruptions cough up tons of the element. The Deccan volcano was no exception. The bulk of the Deccan eruptions released a total of between 99 million and 178 million metric tons. Chicxulub released just a fraction of that. All that mercury left a mark. It shows up in southwestern France and elsewhere. A research team discovered lots of mercury in sediment laid down before the impact. Those same sediments held another clue as well. The fossilized shells of plankton from the dinosaur days. Unlike healthy shells, these specimens are thin and cracked. The shell pieces suggest that carbon dioxide released by the Deccan eruptions made the ocean too acidic for some creatures. Survival was getting very difficult for these critters. Plankton formed the foundation of the ocean ecosystem. Their decline rattled the entire food web. Partners in Crime The Deccan eruptions wreaked havoc at the very least parts of Antarctica. Researchers analyzed the chemical makeup of shells from 29 clam-like shellfish species on the continent's Seymour Island. The shell's chemicals differed depending on the temperature at the time they were made. That let researchers assemble a roughly 3.5 million year record of how Antarctic temperatures changed around the time of the dinosaur extinction. After the start of the Deccan eruptions and the resulting rise in atmospheric carbon dioxide, local temperatures warmed about 7.8 degrees Celsius or 14 degrees Fahrenheit. About 150,000 years later, a second, smaller warming phase coincided with the Chicxulub impact. Both of these warming periods corresponded with high extinction rates on the island. Both catastrophic events were major contributors to the extinctions. Either one would have caused some extinction, but such a mass extinction is due to a combination of both events. Not everyone agrees. Noting that some parts of the world were affected by the Deccan eruptions before the impact is not enough to show that life overall was stressed back then. Sea life flourished until the impact, but maybe bad luck wasn't the reason the dinosaurs encountered two devastating disasters at once. Maybe the impact and the volcanism were related. Volcanoes often erupt after major earthquakes. This happened in 1960, the Cordon Cauye eruption in Chile started two days after a nearby magnitude 9.5 quake. The seismic shockwaves from the Chicxulub impact potentially reached an even higher magnitude of 10 or more. The nature of the eruptions, however, changed within 50,000 years before or after the impact. The amount of erupted material jumped from 0.2 to 0.6 cubic kilometers annually. Something must have altered the volcanic plumbing. There's a one-two punch extinction hypothesis. The shock of the impact fractured the rock enclosing the Deccan magma. This allowed the molten rock to expand and possibly enlarge or combine magma chambers. Dissolved gases in the magma formed bubbles. Those bubbles propelled material upward like in a shaken soda can. Although the physics behind this impact volcano combo is not firm, say scientists on both sides of the debate, especially because Deccan and the impact site were so distant from each other. At the end of the day, this was all guesswork and perhaps wishful thinking. Over the coming months and years, improved computer simulations of the dinosaur doomsday and ongoing studies of the Chicxulub and Deccan rocks could further shake up the debate. For now, a definitive guilty verdict on either accused killer would be difficult. Both events devastated the planet in similar ways at around the same time. It's no longer easy to distinguish between the two. For now, at least, the case of the dinosaur killer will remain an unsolved mystery. While you ponder that mystery, why don't you check out our video on some of the most incredible planets in the universe?